It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Indianapolis Colts. All that and more coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today we've got a fun AFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Brandon Gunn joined here in Indianapolis by Charles Davis. Well, CD, these Colts, they seem to be onto something a few years back. They had the NFL's leading rusher and Jonathan Taylor. But last year, a big fall, down to 4-12-1. And, and they want to get back to what they had a few seasons ago, as you alluded to. Can they get Jonathan Taylor going again on the ground, get their offensive line going? And their defense certainly has to play a whole lot better than it did in 2022. Meanwhile, for the Browns, they come off a 7-10 season a year ago. Not great, but not a total loss either. Now, you think there are building blocks in place? They're there. Look at what they did last year. Their pass defense was number five in the league. Their rushing attack, sixth best in the league. They have players. They have a system. They just need to put it all together. Sanchez ready to go and we are underway from Lucas Oil Stadium. Ford now to return it. Take it at about the one. And he returns this to the 22. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. Leading them out a first round pick in the 2017 NFL Draft. Former Clemson Tiger Deshaun Watson. And he's exactly the man you want to control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And what he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available or when the pressure's about to get to him. Looking to throw right away is Watson. And his first pass is incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing ball to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That burst good for 20 and a first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. On first down, it's Watson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Here now, second and four. Back to throw, Watson. Right back to Njoku. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 38-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. And every time you step on a field, coaches are always going to talk about how important tackling is in a ball game. In this one, especially so. You can't allow these guys to break free and get extra yards after contact, but that's exactly what happens here. That can't continue as this game goes on. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now a give right side. It's Ford. Now he's able to break through one tackle, but it slowed him down enough that he could only manage getting back to the line of scrimmage. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. On second down, here's Watson. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Amari Cooper, the intended target. And yeah, that'll make it third down.
Here's Watson. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. A third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield in coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. So now the Colts will get their first opportunity with a football. A leading them out, still one of the most recognizable QBs in the game and one of the most fun QBs in his fifth season, it's Gardner Minshew. And how about this young man? Took the NFL world by storm as a six-round rookie, signature mullet, mustache, but 21 touchdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great personality, and everyone gravitates towards this guy. Teammates love to win with a quarterback who leads them like that, and fans love to root for a guy who seems just like them. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. Second down and four. Minshew going to keep it. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. And a solid job using his legs. 16 yards and a first down on the keeper. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. And give the tackle to Anthony Walker. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Second and five. From the gun, Minshew to throw. He'll get that one to Taylor complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 45-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 45-yard line. Running straight ahead, Taylor breaks a tackle. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Here's second and three. Now Minshew. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Here's Minshew. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. And that's a gutsy call there on third and short because that's a play that's got a good chance of being blown up in the backfield for a big loss of yardage. But nice job out wide to gather in that screen pass, use his blockers well, and pick up the first down. They'll go play action here with Minshew. This one completes Alec Pierce. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot. Defensively, how do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him.
After the incompletion, here now, third and two. On the handoff, Taylor. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold them to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. They're able to break through that initial contact and winds up getting about three there. It's second down. Here's second and seven. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He'll drop to throw. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It goes as a gain of nine, and it moves the chains. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator, and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out, but his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. They'll run here with Taylor. That's a gain of seven, and we'll leave them with second and goal coming up. They're mounting a nice drive here. Good chunk of yardage there again. O-line, they've been solid this drive. They have that look about them right now that says, if you do anything but run the ball behind us, you're crazy. They have really moved it well on this drive, and they want to finish it off the same way. Here's Taylor again. And this time, he'll score. Touchdown, Indianapolis. So both sides of the football contributing here early. Their defense forces the punt, and then the offense takes it down the field and punches it in on the short touchdown run. And Brandon, that's good complimentary football, and that's what they're going to need if they want to get out of here victorious. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And this is good to make it 7 nothing, Indy. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. From his end zone, here comes Jerome Ford. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. Start the drive, 17 yards and a first down. Now it's Watson. A quick throw there is incomplete. He was looking for the Michigan Wolverine Donovan Peoples Jones. And it's second down. Watson now to throw. Now inside the 25. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. 
Elijah Moore. 56 yards. And the Browns are an extra point away from drawing level. And they just ran the fly route there, didn't they? You broke it down perfectly. He ends up catching that one and taking it all the way into the end zone. Well, thanks. It was pretty simple to break down, though. I mean, that, that's just a guy going, running on the go route, making a play. Speed kills. Speed. <laughs> speed. And what does it do? It kills. There you go. Extra point good by Hopkins. And we are tied at seven. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was finished off by Elijah Moore on the touchdown reception. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time out, Charles. Remember, they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. On first down, nothing opening up really on the running play. Give him maybe a yard, and it'll be second down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature in the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Now second and nine. Again, it's Taylor. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Looking to throw it. Minshew. As to the sideline and pulled in. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. Now a give to Taylor. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. From the 44-yard line, here's a second and eight. Minshew's throw going to be caught by McKenzie. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. It'll be a gain of five. And now we've got a third down and three. Off play action, it's Minshew. That is caught. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. Third and four, he did just enough. I mean, just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And this time, he's able to take it down to the 42. Holding offense. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding Still penalty. Percent. And so many different assignments you could have at that position. And sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. Now a handoff. Taylor with it. And he's taken down at the 50 after a short gain of two. 
Two yards on the pickup. It'll be second down. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession as they've got it facing a second and long situation. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. This pass left side to Downs. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 35. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. First and 10, Taylor now. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. 48 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Throwing on first down is Minshew. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. I know for us it's fun, and it's not so much fun for the rookie receivers when we see them coming into the league and we're good training camps. You see them working on getting two feet down instead of one. But the best ones train in college trying to get two down instead of one, so the transition's a little bit less. In this case, though, when they were completed anyway. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. They haven't been able to stop them so far this series, but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now back to throw. Now Minshew has it knocked out. He's going to be tackled at the Browns' 13-yard line. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. Showed off the juke, but still corralled shy of the five at the six-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. On second down, it's Taylor. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. He couldn't get the edge there, wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's... And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. The downside for the defense is they're dealing with a team that's in their red zone, but the upside... 
Not much room to work with for the offense. Fewer windows in the zone for them to throw into. Tough for a quarterback to get a throw off before the pressure ends up getting to him. The Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. Gay's kick is good, and they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell us end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punt, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise. And now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. Again, they turn to Ford, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Sometimes you get all those big guys down there in one spot, and there's just nowhere to go, and in this case, the defensive tackle used his strength and swallowed him up. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Here's Watson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Quiddy Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. Seven yards on the return after a punt of 39. And they will take over first and 10. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. And Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at the 45. He'll start with a give to Taylor. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains. That means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The offense on third down, they've been outstanding. Seven first downs and eight tries. This will be third and six. Buying time to his left. And he won't quite make it. He needed six, he got about five. Fourth down. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly and neither did he. They got to him just in time and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. And no 
turn here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Now, these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Now Watson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I know I'm an old defender, but I've got to give credit where credit's due. That was smart play calling right there on third and four. They didn't need to do too much. Just let their guy get out there and sit down in the zone. And they hit him for the completion for the first down. On first down, it's Watson. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Here's second and 10. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing on third down, Watson. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it and were able to keep the drive moving. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. Faking the give, now Watson. He's got a man on the crossing route, that's Moore. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. And now we've got flags down. Looked like one of the Browns might have moved. Yeah, that's on the guard, Wyatt Teller. Still first down. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. To throw is Watson. He's got the connection to Cooper. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. A nine-yard pickup in second and six at the 28-yard line. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7, our score. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Now here's a throw that's complete, and they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. From 
the red zone now. Watson. He finds his man complete. That's Ford. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. The first down screen pass, good for five. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball, but someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. Watson. And that one finds the ground, breaking a string of five straight completions. And it brings up second down, no third, third down. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days in Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what did you say to him? Yeah, it was really not right since I blew coverage, <laughs> but since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Here's a diving catch right side. Touchdown! Donovan Peoples-Jones. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Browns have taken the lead. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. McKenzie now from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. And the Colts getting ready to go. And looking at this situation, Charles, you got more than a minute. You've got all three timeouts. Probably no need to play this safe. So what you're saying is that we're doing a little bit of a mind meld here, aren't we? Because I'm thinking along the same lines as you. This amount of time, don't be compelled to play it too safe. This is a chance to get points on the board. Press it a little bit. And especially since a touchdown here gets you the lead. Now Minshew on first and 10. The toss here completed to Pittman. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Minshew. Escaping the pressure, and he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Zadarius Smith, credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. And it's knocked away and incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They try to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. This time they stay on the ground. And they will bottle him up behind the line, and now will they use a timeout? Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. And he fields it cleanly. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half.
The Cleveland offense ready to go. And maybe a chance for a quick completion and then a long field goal try. We'll see. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Ford. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. A final shot before the break. Watson. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime This has report. certainly been Coach. a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle. And we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Colts going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stumped the run. On second down, Minshew. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. And it'll bring up third down. Now Minshew. Garrett able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And that's his second sack in this one. And you just can't ask a defensive end or an edge rusher to play any better than what we're seeing right now. And partner, it's still just the third quarter. I'm thinking he's not done yet. Even if he's not getting a sack, he's bringing a lot of pressure to the pocket. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 42. Back to throw, Watson. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. 
Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. On second and ten, Watson. And that is taken in by Njoku. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That one, a gain of 20 in a first down. It's a nice zone breaker right there. Take the tight end, move him out to the slot, then have him run a corner route versus the zone coverage, which means he's going to be behind the, the, the shallow coverage and ahead of the deep coverage, put the ball right on him. Watson on first down, and that's incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups, and they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Watson now to throw. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch it, turn up field, pick up the first down. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Again, it's Watson. He finds his man complete. That's four. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? Hopkins' kick is good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Mm -hmm. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Yeah, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Following the main field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. McKenzie now from his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. Play action, it's Minshew. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time, and that'll bring up second down. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target in the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him. To find him. Find him. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Minshew sets to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That third down conversion, good for 23. And that's a good job there of knuckling down as an offense. You're trying to board three and out at all costs. And after two straight incompletions, this one's on target, and they're able to keep the chains moving.
Up the middle, here's Taylor. Oh, nice move in midfield. And he's going to take this across the 50 in the Browns territory. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold them. A run there on first down and a pretty good one at five yards, so make it second and five. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Throwing on second down, Minshew. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Dalvin Tomlinson, he's the one to get him this time, and back-to-back -back sacks brings up fourth down. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. Following the punt return here, there is someone shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. The Browns drive about to get started. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure... He would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Here's Watson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Four yards there as they let him out of the pocket, and he got enough for the first. No surprise to see his sideline fired up by that big play. Heck, we're fired up, and we're supposed to be neutral. That's a quarterback putting his body on the line to fight and just barely get the first down. When he does something like that, it gets everyone ready to lay it all out there and try and match his intensity. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. Well, CD, a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. They'll try the air now with Watson. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And now that sets up third and two. Here's 
Watson. Fighting more on the out route for the completion. And he is going to lose yardage here. They call it a loss of a yard there. And it'll be fourth down. Well, they opted not to run it. They completed the pass on third and two, but they lost yardage to bring up four. So give credit to the guys on the other side of the ball. They snuffed out the play. But it does bring into question, one, the play call, because they didn't run the ball there. They could have run it. And two, just not getting it. That's got to be deflating for them. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Minshew's throw caught by Pierce. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Now they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. On the counter, it's Taylor. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. After seeing that, maybe time to go back to some downfield throws here. Yeah, anything. Change it up because the teams that win, the best teams, they're the ones that make adjustments. Doesn't mean you can't come back to what you thought you could get done. Sometimes when you open things up a little bit, you can get back to what you wanted to do before. And he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage, but that's about it. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on for the fifth time here today. This is taken at the 23. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. And now the Browns coming out on the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10. Just shy of the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Here's Watson now on second down. A uh, quick throw there is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. They run with Ford. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. From this vantage point, they've got the lead here, so for me, that'd be enough to go ahead and punt the football and let my defense defend the long field. If you go for it, you don't get it, then you really put your defense in a tight spot. Yeah, but we never know what people ultimately will decide to do here on fourth and inches. The Browns send out their punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. 
And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Minshew, first and 10. And that, oh, nearly picked off. Well, it would have been a great time for their first interception of the game. Instead, it's second down. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. Third quarter here in Indy. This is second and 10. They'll look to throw. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. We're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long. And you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Third and long as a defender, all you want to do is guard the first down line. Make sure that everything stays in front and run up there and make the tackle. They did everything exactly right, except making the tackle the running back. And he ends up finding a way to pick up a first down. Brandon, that play just should not happen. On the handoff, this is Taylor. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. Second down and six now. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It's a first down following a gain of three. Brandon, unfortunately, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them, so this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. They run on first down as they get about three, second and seven, forthcoming. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver, but he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front, so if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him, picks up three on that carry. Out of the gun is Minshew. He'll drop this down to Taylor, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. And they'll run the option on third and short yardage. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he'll manage to break a tackle and get this forward for a couple. It'll be second down. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, 
he definitely makes up for it in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. From a couple of yards beyond midfield, here's second and eight. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Miles Garrett, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. And on third down, the Browns going to go with a nickel set. Here's Minshew. He's got a man complete. How about that? They weather the storm of a third and 17 to pick up the first. They absolutely had to take some chances downfield trailing here in the fourth quarter. So why not go four verticals, send the guys downfield, say make a play? And that's one of the favored routes of offensive coordinators. You know why? Because receivers can be open at any point running that route. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Back to throw here. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Taylor. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. From the 21, here's second down and eight. Off the option, here's Taylor. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. They'll set up a throw. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down by a couple of yards, it would appear, as they're able to convert on fourth and five. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Now is second and ten. They run once more with Taylor. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Continues to be a struggle for this offense and this home crowd. They're growing a little restless here in the second half. And I think they've just got to look at how they're trying to move the football. Yeah, you want to run it, but maybe you spread it out, maybe some swing passes that can take the place of runs and give you a little more space. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. Well, he was really focused downfield, but there was really no viable options. The coverage was too good. And the defense really quickened the tempo of that play with their pass rush because there was nowhere for him to go with the football. The only place he ended up, down on the ground. So an interesting call there to take the three, but I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied. But, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the end. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone.
cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. And this taken in at the goal line. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. And the Browns getting set to go. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And his throw here is incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing again, it's Watson. Throwing over the middle incomplete from the snap he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball but surprise that guy was covered so that took his attention elsewhere to no avail the browns on third down not quite 50 percent four for nine this is third and ten now watson flush to his right and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Deshaun Watson, so multi-dimensional, able to scramble for the first. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. This is Ford. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. So with your team leading in the fourth quarter, you know you've got to run the football. They know you've got to run the football. Sometimes that means there's nowhere to run the football. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Watson's throw into the hands of Peoples-Jones. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 45-yard line. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Watson. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To the air yet again, Watson. Oh, he'll want that one back, incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department, third down. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're gonna lose confidence in him though because of the track record. Such a good player. Maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. And he is stopped just short on third down. Got nine yards, but needed ten. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. 
And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. But he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Going for the knockout punch. They'll try and run. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. On the ground, it's Ford. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Now it's Watson. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Deshaun Watson, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Browns get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. If you're going to play quarterback in the NFL, you've got to have great vision, and you've got to remain calm when things break down in the pocket. Both of those traits are on display there. He surveys the situation, sees the middle of the field open, so he's just going to step up and take it himself. Very well done there. Hopkins with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Isaiah McKenzie now on the return. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So Minshew and the Colts now down by 11, a minute 40 remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Minshew finding Pittman and they're able to get this one across the 35 decent start to the drive there of course they need the touchdown two-point conversion and a field goal yeah those guys are into it how about the guys on the sidelines you see the coaches signaling all the personnel groups up on the sideline ready to go in and out of the game they've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it now Minshew Pass complete to Taylor, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. I don't know how well our microphones are picking it up for those of you at home, but uh, Charles, you and I can hear it. A lot of groans right now coming from this crowd. I don't know if we're picking up what's happening in the stadium or from the people who are supporting this team at home because it's coming through loud and clear to you and me. This offense, they've been stuck in neutral much of the game, and on that last play, they actually went in reverse. I think this crowd would have liked neutral, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> neutral would have strongly been preferred. They'll take anything positive at this point. They'll come up first and 10 here. Here's Minshew. And going right back to Pittman. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. Second and two. 
Here comes second down. Again, Minshew looking to throw. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Indy.